I was born into a Christian home. Uh, during World War II, my daddy was on, Aqu oh, on Okinawa Island, and he was raised Methodist, my mom Baptist, but uh, he became a committed Christian at age 14 and started going to the Plymouth Brethren Church and married my mother, took her into it, and uh, I was dedicated as an infant in the Brethren Church while he was gone. And um, at age nine, I was in Monday Bible School and had a memory verse, for I know that is in me and my flesh dwelleth no good thing, and I became conscious of my own sin. And there happened to be a revival week uh, that very week, and parents took all three of us children there, and uh, the preacher was a chalk artist, and he drew a picture of uh, the Passover with a door with blood coming down the two side posts and the mantle above. And um, I was just intrigued with the story. And my brother and I went up and talked to the pastor after uh, the meeting was over. And he asked me a question. He said, well, Judy, do you have the blood of Jesus painted on your heart door? And I said, well, I don't know. So I got in the car and talked to my father about that all the way home. And uh, I was under conviction by the Holy Spirit, really, um, because I had had that memory verse and knew I was a sinner. I knew I needed the blood of Jesus applied to my heart door somehow, you know. So I talked to Dad that night, and he prayed with me and tucked me into bed, and I experienced incredible peace. It was amazing. At age 11, I was baptized in our Plymouth Brethren Church, received my first communion at age 12 at a camp uh, after a challenging message to become a disciple of Jesus. Um, I went out into the woods and knelt at a tree stump and promised Jesus I'd be his missionary and I'd go anywhere, I'd do anything he asked me to do. I went off to Wheaton College in Wheaton, Illinois, and met Peter in summer school, and he was headed into seminary and into New Testament teaching. But um, I wanted somebody that was Plymouth Brethren uh, to be my husband because I knew that would be okay with my church, okay with my parents. And when I found out he was Plymouth Brethren, uh, and I liked him. He was good husband material, and his faith was very strong. He he challenged me, so um, I basically followed him around the world, getting degrees, and then we were both missionaries in Germany, where he taught in a Bible school, and um, he received a call to come back and to teach at a seminary in Pittsburgh. Uh, Pennsylvania, Trinity Episcopal School for Ministry, and to do that, um, they asked us to become confirmed Episcopalians. So I knew that was important for his job, and I went along with it and became an Episcopalian uh, on the outside, but not really in my heart. I was still brethren in my heart, but I supported him and taught Sunday school in the Episcopal Church when we got there, and uh, ran a wives group, prayer group with the, the wives of students. And I was very much into following the Lord and doing anything that I could uh, for his ministry and for the glory of the kingdom of God. So, um, in fact, backtrack to, to England when he was doing his PhD, I did a um, Bible study on the book of Mark and actually led one of my neighbors to Christ because I told the Lord I'd be his missionary and I had to do that. Um, but I've, I've just lived my entire life focused on Jesus and I'll do what you asked me to do. When we were in Houston and Peter was teaching at Houston Baptist University, we ran into a community that John Michael Talbot has founded, the Brothers and Sisters of Charity, and it's a Catholic community. But we loved everything they stood for. It, it had brought together streams in our lives like 
community, the charismatic movement, um, social justice, uh, and all these different streams. And so we went to one of their gatherings and um, we really enjoyed um, part of the brothers and sisters, uh, everything about them. I felt, I really fell in love with the community. So um, it was one summer I went up to Canada to visit the children and uh, Peter was back in Houston, still teaching at Houston Baptist. And he um, sent me an email and he said, um, I've just finished filling out my application to become a Catholic priest. Um, and um, I lack one thing. That's a support letter from you to the Pope telling him that you are completely behind my becoming a Catholic and a Catholic priest. Oh my goodness. I just was nonplussed. I did not want to become a Catholic myself in any way, but I asked some advisors. First, my own spiritual director, and I asked John Michael Talbot, and I asked a good friend um, who had become Catholic, what shall I do about this? I've been asked to write this letter. And so they all three told me the very same thing. You don't ever have to become a Catholic yourself, but you have to write this letter to support your husband's journey. So I wrote the letter to the Pope in good faith that I supported Peter's journey. Um, but then we went off to Little Portion for their national gathering and all the domestics in the community came together and we had mass on the last day. And Bishop Taylor from Little Rock led the mass and he told us that was the most joyful mass he did all year at the monastery. And I wondered, why would a Catholic Mass be so joyful? <laughs> and so I said, well, uh, we'll see. So that was the, his opening words uh, to begin the Mass. And we went through the Mass, and um, Psalm 95 uh, was the psalm for that day. Um, if you hear my voice, listen, you know, do not harden your heart. And I thought, uh-oh, because the Lord had spoken to me through through that very verse and other crossroads in my life. And I thought, what's he up to? Then the bishop was laying the table for us for the Eucharist, and John Michael picked up his guitar and started singing one of his own competition, com, uh, compositions, uh, I Surrender. I started hearing the Lord talk to me, and he said, you need to surrender. And I said, well, what, Lord? Do I need to surrender, surrender my ministry in the Episcopal Church? Yes. Do I need to surrender being an Episcopalian? Yes. Well, what else do I need to surrender? Everything. <laughs> you need to surrender all. And I said, well, Lord, are you really saying that means to become a Catholic? He said, yes. So I, just with tears pouring out of my eyes, Peter was looking at me like, what's wrong with her? You know? um, I said, yes, Lord, if you are asking me, and this is you, uh, there's nothing but yes that I can say. So I decided to become Catholic in the middle of that Mass. And it was a joyful Mass, except I cried all the way through it. <laughs> it was a very joyful Mass. So that got me to the Catholic Church.